Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind. Hey, everybody. Welcome. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. It's so great to be having you all here. We have a great show lined up for you today. We're just waiting for Amy Zerner and Monty Farber to join us here today. Uh, we're going to be talking about like, I'm going to see if I can hold this book up being on it like right there. Like, did I even do that right? Is that like even? There we go. There Looks we go. Good to me, okay, Benny. That, that. Good to me. Um, we're going to talk about it. I got the cards here. And so I'm excited about this today. I got to share a little story. Uh, for those of you tuning in, this is the Dr. Pat show. I am Dr. Pat. I am the host of the show, formerly known as, no, not Prince. <laughs> or a symbol. <laughs> Did I just say I that? I can only imagine what symbol you could come up with. Did I just say that? <laughs> but Benny, here's what's so fun. <laughs> I didn't just say that. I'm sorry. He's like looking at me now like, dude, did you? Formerly known as crust busting your way to an awesome life. Crust busting your way to an awesome life. Google that. Google crust busting your way to an awesome life. Just go ahead and try it. So here's what's cool about that brand. Um. I've been talking about a little bit here and there, Benny. That was the original show name in 2003. And I think it stayed, I, I want to say it didn't change up till five, right? It, it pretty much was like 2003 and then maybe 2005 had an epiphany. But if you Google it, you're going to find some of the most interesting things. You're going to find Christina Aguilera in crust busting. You're going to find Shirley MacLaine in crust busting. I mean, you're just going to find a lot of stuff about crust busting. One of the things I'm really struck by is I love that concept. I love it. And I love it so much that even beyond when we changed the show name, um, I did workshops on it and created just wisdom circles about it. it was just really cool um and i created a model about it and it was kind of for me so perfect for where i was in my life because you know i if you if you heard me talk about parts of my life here and a little bit about what it was like i tried to share some of the lessons and one of the lessons i've shared recently and this is kind of a little eerie um story um i've been talking about my friend and mentor dan vandermoss and i found out this morning he had passed away and i just thought to myself what was it about dan and dan's message that was trying to talk to me and i i started to share some stories about second chances and how dan gave me a second chance when i was like 17 and just a crazy child, worked, worked for Bell Labs, phone company. And I was just like a rebel kid. I just really was. I mean, I don't, I don't even know how to explain that, although I'm still a little bit of that now. Um, but Dan taught me the meaning of respect. And recently I've shared the story of that with so many people. But you see, what I love about this and what we're going to talk to Amy and Monty about is there's an energy and an energy in all of us and a spirit in all of us. And I've often thought about, you know, is it, is it what we do on this planet, the impact we have on other people's lives, do they last beyond the physical, beyond the body? And I'm really clear about that now. I'm really clear that we are an accumulation of all of our energies. And what I mean by that is all of them. Some people think this life, that life, if you're Mark Anthony, you're thinking the afterlife or the frequency of that. And if you're Amy, 
and your Monty, you're thinking about the energies and the wisdom that comes forward in that. So today's show is looking at that wild goddess in all of us. That's what we're going to do today. You know, that that I like to think of myself like with, you know, like Dan dreaming me out. I'd like to think about that as like a wild goddess child. But we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, I want to hear from Amy and Monty. He's like, there's such a thing as a wild goddess child. You know, what if we could just look at our kids and be like, oh, that's like just she's just like a she's like a really just like a wild goddess child. Let's take a short break, Benny, Olivia. When we come back, it's gonna be all about this. Stay tuned, everybody. We'll be right back. That is a killer song, X Tina. That is a killer song. And Benny, thank you for playing that because Benny remembers like when we were talking before the break, uh, Monty, we were talking about crust busting, which was the original name of the show. And I gave out crust busting awards for like two or three years to like people. And one of them was to Christine Aguilera for that, oh. that album, right? Wow. Uh, stripped. It was written from her heart, written from her life experiences. And if you now Google crust busting and Aguilera, it's like in her bio, in her, oh, right? That's great. And what I love about that is I didn't do it for that reason. I was so excited to have found something to take me out of my depression. See, that's right. Like, that's where I was before like 2003. I had everything on paper for people that looked at me to say, what is wrong with you? You just finished school. You could get the big job. And I'm like, uh, 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 no. So I was talking about something interesting with my friend Dan Vandermoss, who I found out recently passed away. And he taught me an interesting lesson. And I love that we're talking about the wild goddess. I just love this. And I love it because we're looking at that edge, if you could tell us, Monty. Monty Farber's joining me here today. But we're looking at that edge. You know, and I, I love the edge. I talk about the edge a lot. And the edge that I talk about a lot is the edge between a bold move on my own behalf for whatever that is in my life, whatever I'm in or no bold move. And that's really interesting. And so thank you for joining me here. And thank you for doing this. Oh, I mean, it's my pleasure. Let's talk, can we talk about, like, this is not just like the goddess oracle. This is the wild goddess oracle. This is true. We did the, we did the goddess oracle back in um, 1991, uh, goddess guide me. So we're not goddess come lately. Uh, <laughs> You know, but what you were saying before about depression and about that song, which is gorgeous, and yeah. you can tell it's from the heart. Um, you can't blame anybody for being depressed because, you, and, and, and about the edge, because the edge is, you know, we're all going to die. So then it's like either, are you going to let that stop you from living? Or are you going to just say, you know, are you going to let that roll, roll over you? We just had an experience like that. That's the reason Amy's not sitting next to me. Mm -hmm. Our cat almost passed away and, and is recovering amazingly. You know, we had a thousand people praying for him on social media, at least a thousand people mm -hmm. that prednisone and a chiropractor and, and, and a good vet and our love. Um, and, and the wild goddess Oracle comes from out of all of that. Because mm -hmm. what is an oracle? An oracle is something that helps you make a decision. I once asked Amy, what's the common denominator of all human caused suffering? And she said, without hesitating, which is one of the reasons I married her, she said, poor decision making. You know, you get yourself into these places or else you are the victim of someone else's poor decision making. So that's why it is a common denominator. And an oracle uh, we're all we're all oracles, yes, but it's just like saying we were all psychic, but not everybody listens to it. Not everybody is good mm -hmm. at it. You mm -hmm. know, we've I've devoted my life to it, so I'm better at it than most people. And so is Amy. Amy has allowed the goddess to flow through her in her art. Her art is just so staggering. Yeah, you know, um, 
I'll show you. I can just give you one example of her art that I happen to have here. I mean, this is just one example of her art. She won the National Endowment for the Arts Award. She makes art when she's sad. She makes art when, when she's not sad. You know, she makes big art, she makes little art. And during the pandemic, when we're all so scared and it's still going on and it'll probably astrologically be going on for quite some time, a little bit longer, um, she started making these paper collages. And the way life would have it, we got a call, you know, here we are, the age of 70, when a lot of people feel forgotten, but our publishers are remembering us because our books sell. So they, they want books that sell. And they said, do you have anything else? You, we, we want something from you. And Amy said, well, as a matter of fact, I do. Mm. And we did the Wild Goddess Oracle and it started in the spring of 2020. And now it's, it just came out two days ago. That was the official publication date. People yeah. got them. And it's coming out in French at the same time in France. And, you know, it, it went from, you know, paper collages glued down to the wild yeah. goddess oracle. It, you know, yeah. So, so, and, but the oracle is a fight against the giving up against it, it's, it's to help you walk the edge. I, you know, I love that you call it the edge. I do call it the edge. And I love what Amy said. So let me comment on this for a minute, because this is going to really take us off. This is going to be, le this is our leapfrog here for the moment. Um, I remember having a conversation with somebody uh, a while ago about n bad decisions. Yeah. And out of my mouth came, the worst bad decision you can make is no decision. Well, sometimes no decision is the right decision, but it, 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 right. Right. But what I said was when you're weighing the balance of what you can do to empower yourself or leaving it up to somebody else. Oh, yeah. To do. Oh, yeah. Then that point of silence. I mean, who said it better than Simon and Garfunkel? Hello. The sounds of silence. Sounds of silence. I yeah. mean, that is like. Some people would say Dylan said it better than them, but no, I don't think so. Well, hello, and, darkness, my old friend. The exactly. Can, can easily be seen to be the depression. Can, you know, um, Churchill, who was g given to uh, depression, called it the black dog. You know, you know, <laughs> and, and you don't want to get into a color being a bad thing. I, I certainly don't. But it, it's that in the sense of darkness, not being able to see that I think but then you have blind people who are amazingly resilient and the strongest people I know personally. Yeah. Um, so, but once again, we're all just whistling past the graveyard and an oracle helps you to do that. And that's you know, what Amy and I do. She makes art like a, a bee makes honey. Yeah. She's sad or happy. She only does self portraits when she's sad, strangely enough. I mean, I, I'm the same. I have to send Amy a couple of self portraits I did when I when I went through a period and moved to Seattle. I, I have to send her a couple. I, I'm going to be interested in sending her a, a copy of, of a sketch I did that when I first moved here, I did a couple of sketches and then I stopped all of a sudden, just like nothing. It's like I did them, I stopped and I showed somebody the sketch the other day and they say, what does it mean? And I said, I have no idea. I said, I did it, and here it is. Um, An honest, I, honest uh, person. But, but, you know, what I love about this is when I looked at, and, and we're going to talk about this, and by the way, for those of you out there, we're going to pull cards for you today from the deck. I have them right here. So I want to just open up the phone lines, or and for those of you on Facebook as well, we will be able to pull cards for you. 1-800-930-2819. But I was fascinated for, uh, uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, the contrast in the imagery. I love that you use the word wild and you use black as a background. Yes. Now, I, I dressed in black for pretty much 30 years of my life. And, oh, who's wearing black today? Okay, maybe even longer. Just us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny. But I wanted to ask you uh, about this because it's not that we're not all intuitive, Monty. I mean, that's not it. But sometimes I just need a little bit of nudging. Yeah. And by pulling a card sometimes, yeah. you know, it gives me an insight, right? 
so this morning, shuffle the cards and I shuffle them pretty good, right? So you pull a card and then you look at the card and you ask yourself what it means. So I'm going to tell you, this was the weirdest thing for me. I'll show you the card, right? Okay, yeah. hang on. Can you see the card? Oh, sure. The visionary. And I looked at this card and I thought, oh my gosh, that looks like Natalie Wood. So, so YouTube channel, Natalie Wood. But I, but so then you get the card. She does. Then you get the card and you're thinking, okay, what does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? That's what the book's for. So here's the dilemma with pulling a card like this for me. Most of my life, there's been some kind of uh, connotation you're this is you you're over here you're this you're on another planet you're on this you're on another planet i love another it. planet that was in my corporate performance reviews as an executive no really? kidding like yeah yeah we we love pat great performer but we think she's from another planet wow but let's talk about today for those of you out there we're going to be pulling these cards for you and the question really is what is the question and i love this when you know we do this what is the question? So the, the, the wild goddess oracle can help us know the meaning of the oracle. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. And we're going to talk about this. Yeah. So we're taking your calls. Nancy, we're going to get right to you. Charlene, we're going to get right to you. Um, you know, the funny thing is, though, Dr. Pat, is that it means what it, we know as the originators of so many oracles, it means what it means to you exactly that's my point yeah I, I it yes i wrote a whole book about it and yes amy no you know did the art and she never sketches she just does the art she makes the art like i said like a bee makes honey but it's what it means to you trumps what it says in the book if you get another hit if it reminds you of someone if it reminds you of a bit of something you've done that's what it means you the magic's in you not in the cards that's it. And that's what we want to really emphasize. And that's why I said to you that when I find so, and usually Amy knows this every time you guys are on the show and I pull a card, it's never one card. It's like I shoot for one card, but one card doesn't come out. And the cards, in a sense, talk to you. And, you know, I don't think you heard this, Monty, before, but I lost a very, I, I lost a friend of mine, a mentor of mine, you know, someone that basically saved my career for me when I was 17. You mean recently? Yes. Oh, and here, here is, here's the thing. I started to talk about him on air about four to six weeks ago. I started to tell the story of Dan Vandermoss and what he taught me about respect and how I started to talk about second chances and this is the man this is one of the angels that gave me a second chance at a time in my life when wild child was an understatement <laughs> understatement imagine me at 17 in a corporate environment hello right really yeah sounds um, like the movie uh, yeah i i took this job it was uh, either be homeless or take this job i've been um, homeless i take the job is take my the job opinion. take the job but what I love about this is there are no mistakes that I started to talk about Dan and I started to honor Dan and he actually passed away in September, but I only found out today. Oh, I'm so sorry. We have to start to talk about the heroes in our lives. Mm, yeah. And part of this is looking how you both help us honor the hero that is within us. Whether it's this deck of cards, Monty, or it's other books you've written. And you know the way that you work with people, and if folks have listened to the previous shows, they will know that we're talking about a life journey that both of you hold precious in the work that yeah. you do, whether it's astrology or, or whether it's you know energetic psychic readings, that's what it is. And I want to go ahead and take a short break. When we come back, we're going to go right to the phone. Charlene, Nancy, for those of you out there, 1-800-930-2819. We are taking your calls. You're going to be able to connect with Monty Farber. Amy is not with us at the moment, but it's all about you. <laughs> and your wild guard of sales. 
Let's take a short break. Benny, Olivia, we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, welcome back. I am so thrilled to introduce all of you to uh, the latest uh, set of tools from uh, both Amy uh, and, um, and, and Monty. And one of the things I want to say about this for a minute, and just for those of you just tuning in, this is, um, this is, this is another thing that Amy Zerner and Monty Farber are bringing forward. The Wild Goddess Oracle, Divination and Ritual for Living an Empowered Life. That's it. That's what this is about. And we're going to talk about how do we use these. But in addition to this, um, we have three copies of these to give away. And oh, Benny, cool. we're going we're gonna to give away to our first two callers here. We're going to take care of that. So get ready, everybody. And, you know, one of the things that I want to say, too, is we were talking during the break. And, you know, I was telling you that generally what happens is I get a jumper or get something. And um, later on in the show, I will share what those three jumpers were. But now what I want to do is I want to invite our first caller, Benny. I guess that's Charlene, right? You got it. Charlene, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Hello, Pat. How are you? Hello, Monty. Hi, Charlene. Love your name. How can we Thank help you, you today? I have a question for yeah. um, my Go reading. For Go for okay. it. What, as what aspect of the wild goddess within myself have I detached from? That is... I have to tell you, that's the best question I've ever heard because it shows your bravery and it shows your awareness of how you act, how a person actually grows. That's the way you grow by asking, what do I need? What don't I have? That's great. You just, well, you made my day. Yeah, boy. I love Thank it. Thank you. Well, the, the card I pulled is the truth, which is, I don't want to give away any secrets, but the truth seems to be jumping around today. And I, you, because you asked such a true question, I cannot believe that you are detached from the truth. Therefore, I have to say that you might be detached from telling people your truth. That's what I would get as, as the reader. What, what do you get, Pat? Um, I, I get that too. Um, uh, sometimes the hardest thing is to face our own truth. And... And that has to do with a lot of things. And what was interesting is Monty pulled a card and I pulled a card as well. But facing our own truth. And I have to think about points in time in my life when I haven't been able to do that. And it's usually because of woundedness or a form of woundedness or some version of whatever you want to call it for woundedness. And it was really interesting because the card that popped out for me, for you, was the wounded. And so when I think about that, I think about what is being called to heal. Charlene, does that make sense? Yes, it does. Definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and we, we all... Um, have sometimes we think we've healed something and uh, something calls us to look a little deeper um, and to actually delve into the darkness in order to find the gift in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there it is. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then usually when this happens, Charlene, it's usually a call to action. At least for me, you know, it, it's, okay. it kind of hits me, you know, first of all, I think about the frequency when we do shows like this. I mean, we're living in a digital world and there's a frequency that we just can't get away from. But when you tap into a frequency of a show like this and with Monty, especially, and his psychic abilities, and when you're talking about your question, there's got to be something that is well, I'm going to use a strong word now, demanding attention. Yes. Demanding, not like maybe. Yes. Yeah. And it's not difficult 
to remove. No. No. I'm interested to know what the yeah, thing that. about it. What, what what do you think about the thing about the truth, the one that I pull for you? Yeah. Charlene? I do speak my truth. Uh, it sounds like it. That's what I'm trying to figure out. You know, because one of the benefits of using an oracle, any oracle, is the conversation you have with yourself about what you've gotten. You could either agree with what you've gotten, disagree, or just be totally puzzled. And, and yeah. it starts you on ex exploration. But that's what I got for you. I'm doing. I, yeah. I love the truth with, card. With, I yeah, love it. Like it, it's uh, every truth is different. Hundred percent. And and the the I mean yes, there are facts that we can't argue with, but but the Valkyrie that that is on the truth card is a warrior. So that, so perhaps that's what it's talking about being a warrior for truth. Yes, and and the strength that you gain from it. Um, you uh, you've always had that strength. Yeah. Let me just read from the book, if I could, because this is really telling. And this card, by the way, is one of the cards that popped out before for me. And let me just read this and then you can kind of take it in. And then Charlene, make sure we have your address. The truth cannot be denied, contained or hidden away. She has the power to push back the darkness of lies and ignorance to show everything to us as it really is. The truth is not afraid of questions or of those who have opinions she knows are not truth. She lets them speak freely because she knows that one of the main reasons we are alive on earth is to find the truth in our own way. And then it goes on to say something important. I'm going to read this whole one. The appearance of the truth in your reading is an indication that it is even more important than usual that you tell the truth and be willing to hear the truth too. You must emulate her brave warriorness demeanor and not shrink from others whose truth seems to be different from yours, nor should you try to shut them out or stifle them in some ways. It is true that the truth shall set you free. That is a big action. That's a I don't know. Part. That's a big one. I don't know about you, but like, I'm like, talk to the hand. <laughs> <laughs> and this is saying, no, no, no. No, 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 no talking to the hand. No, just got to sit there and listen. It's huge. No talking to the hand today. It's just not going to happen. Thank yeah. you, Charlene. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and enjoy your copy of the Wild Goddess Oracle. Absolutely. Wow. Thank you so much for the gift. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, You're Charlie. one of the first people to have it. It just came out. It's it beautiful. Came. They're great. All right, Benny, let's go to Jersey, shall we? All right, Nancy, hello. Hi, Nancy. Hi, there. How are you today? Hi, Dr. Pat. I'm good. Today's actually my birthday, so I'm so Happy excited. Birthday. I won the... <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And make Andy sure Benny has Jersey your address. Too. Make sure Benny has your address so he can send this to you. Okay, before I go, I will. Yeah, don't you. hang up. And, like, um, yeah. Go ahead. I won't. I won't. I, ha I heard you talking about depression. I had a history of depression too, very severe. And this past year, I started tapping. It's changed my life. It's oh, amazing. Cool. I, I'm, I, I, yeah, it's really helped me. So my question is, I was, I live in New Jersey. I was planning on moving to New Mexico. It just like inspired me. I kind of wound up in New Jersey when my father got sick. I grew up here and I kind of came back. Um, but now so many things in New Jersey are opening up too. I'm meeting so many more beautiful people. My question is, I'm now I'm thinking, could I live both in New Mexico and New Jersey? That is a great question, boy. You it's know, I, I'm kind of having the same deal. That is an interesting question, but not to New Mexico. It's very interesting oh, that we both have the word new in it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah I, hmm. I got the the lover this was actually almost the cover image for the for the wild goddess oracle wow. and and the lover it says on the the cards say stuff on the back so you this sets yeah. you off so you don't have to look it up every time but you can certainly look it up and it says with love all things are possible for love replaces your confusing doubts and weakening fears with faith in yourself and others so i mean of course you can live in both places um it's i think you should go where you where you love or where you have a lover right and i had a reading a woman said that there's a man waiting for me in new mexico that i gotta oh, get no, why do you want to go okay well that makes sense 
<laughs> no, I was planning on going. Yeah. That was just an additional. Oh, the love are interesting. Interesting. Oh, yeah, let, me, Dr. Pat. let me ask you a question. What is it that makes you think you can't live in both places if you choose to? Good question. Now, I don't know what part of Jersey you're in, but the part of Jersey that Linda lives in, that I that I live in, and that that I would, if I were going to live in Jersey and Seattle, it would be the part of Jersey I would live in. And it's the central part of Jersey. Oh. It's the real country part, right? Yeah, um, I'm in Bayonne, right? Yeah, yeah you, Bayonne. exactly. You know, Bayonne, yeah. 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 So you're like closer <laughs> to, to New York, right? Right, a half hour. Exactly. Yeah. So, so do you want, here's a question. There's always a, I want to live in both places or I should. See, and if this is a mm. should, right? You know what I'm saying? It's like when I yes. moved from Jersey to Seattle, Pacific Northwest, I mean, I packed up a U-Haul. Like it was like, I, it wow. was like an alien took over my body again. And it was like, you, you got to move. You got to move. You got to move. And I packed it up and I came here and honestly, but do you know if it's a should or a could? Yeah, it's, it's a could and it's, I want good, to, good, good. but um, since I've opened up this, this year, the past few months, especially I've been meeting neighbors who have needs and stuff. And then I, I was going to New Mexico part for myself and then part to serve a need in the community. And now I'm thinking there's a need here, but I would be happier in New Mexico. I would be happier in New Mexico. You would say, say that again. I would, I would See? be happier in New Mexico, but I feel a little guilty leaving when that's to do here in Bayonne. That is my learn? point right there. Yeah. Yeah. So just go, let it go. Well, how are you with altitudes? I don't know, because a lot of New Mexico is is way up. I did see that. I I I I don't know how that's going to affect me either. So I'm thinking, should I just go and visit? Yeah. Definitely, De definitely. Yeah. Before you move there for a hundred percent, because you know Albuquerque is what eight thousand feet, and 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 then uh, yeah, you know, Santa I Fe love the high is, desert. Is even I, higher. I love right it. There. Yeah, uh, you know, and and so that's a lot. That some people do not do well in altitude. Yeah, you know, like like Denver is high up. There are places where some people just don't go because of the altitude. Mm -hmm. But it's an interesting uh, trip to, to take. Trip. It's really an interesting trip. Yeah, to beautiful. Take because it's it's you're talking about a real. I love the high desert. I just absolutely every vision quest I do, I got to do it at about eight thousand feet, or else I'm not going to do it. Wow. And there's something really? about it for me that I can't explain. People say it's like a past life thing or something. I don't know. But if you've mm -hmm. never been there, well, you should take I, I that trip. Arizona. I loved Arizona. Yeah. They call it the land of the enchantment. Uh, that's, that's for sure. It's on their license place. Yep. Yeah. The land of enchantment. Oh, it's so interesting. I should just go and visit and see how that, how that goes. Absolutely. And, um, Absolutely. I was and thinking between take, Albuquerque and Santa Fe, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. those are those are like those are just like cool places. They right? are. So they you're are. picking two really cool places, right? You're like two, you're picking That's like right. these little mini communities in these places that are, are cultures all their own. They're just like incredible, right? Uh, but I will give and, you this advice and don't hang up so we can get your information because we're gonna go to break. Here's what I would say to you. I don't regret this. So I, all y'all listening, like from the Seattle shows, please don't take this wrong. Because this, this was uh, me moving was meant to happen. It was, I don't care. It was going to happen. But the way the universe, God, whatever you believe in worked me to be here was it sent me here to visit my friend Pat in a summer that I think Benny, correct me if I mispronounced uh. this. Uh, I got, came in the summer. And it was an El Nino. What is that, Benny? El Nino? Yeah. El Nino? Oh, El Nino, that. La Nino. Yeah. Yes. What does that mean? So I come here for two weeks. I love it. I don't have a car. I have a bike. I'm biking everywhere. I loved it so much. I was studying for GREs before I got to accept it. And I said, I'm going to stay here longer. I stayed here six weeks. And oh, everybody God. was telling me no this is not normal this sun this like all this beauty and i'm like you're you gotta be lying to me 
It's oh gonna be God. true. You're telling me what? It's oh gonna God. rain and be cloudy for like 200 days. I don't believe you. Wow. So this is the way I think the universe did this for me. I knew I had to move here. And I knew that what happened was they gave me the sunniest summer outside of this one we just had that I've ever seen. <laughs> and then I moved here and it was gray 168 days in a row. But my wow, spirit, that's a miracle. My spirit belonged here. And I never look back. Yeah. Take the trip. Right. And if your spirit, you know what I'm saying? If your spirit yeah, feels spirit it. So. Yeah. You got to tell us how you make out, yeah. okay? All right. Now, don't hang up. We're going to get some information from you, okay? Um, let's right. take a Thank short break. You Thank you so much. You, don't birthday. hang up. 1 800 930 2819. You got a question for us. We'd love to answer it for you. We'll be right back. And it is the Wild Goddess Oracle. And so, those of you out there, when we come back, I'm going to tell you how to get your own copy. And we're going to do some more cards. We're going to talk about like the jumpers. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. And we're going to tell you in a minute um, how to find out more about this, how to get your deck, how to get the book, The Wild Doris of Cards. A question came in about the show later tonight. And the answer is yes. Uh, the Psychic and the Doc is going to be on at, uh, for those of you out there, it's on Transformation Talk Radio, and it's on um, at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And you could listen to that on Transformation Talk Radio, but also go to Facebook, Transformation Talk Radio, and you'll be able to watch Mark and I there do that show later today. Um, for now, though, this is about Wild Goddess Oracle. And we're going to talk about what happens when three cards jump out in a minute. But M Monty, before we do, oh, right. can you tell people how they can find out more about you, how they can find out about the show you do? Just give people some info. Sure. Uh, Monty Farber, Monty with an E. Uh, you can go to montyfarber.com. Um, also, that's my email address, monty at montyfarber.com. Or if you want to find out about Amy and the art, uh, amy at amyzerner.com is the email amyzerner.com is the website and all of our books and all of our stuff is under the enchanted world.com the enchanted world.com we do a show called ask the oracles on zoom every uh, monday at 12 30 eastern time and you can ask questions of me amy a guest oracle and jeff pulver who's a tech oracle we're doing a lot of exciting things but i love this show <laughs> <laughs> you ask the best questions and you have a lot of interesting guests. I, I, I still am getting over the first question about, uh, you know, asking what do, yeah. what is it that I'm disconnected with? Oh my God, what a great question that was. I love that. And, you know, I'm applying that question now to the cards that popped out with me because it is a wonderful question. It and, is. you know, the thing I find about the, the, the book and the cards as always you know, this is less about a card and more about a journey that we are getting invited to take. Yes, 100%. You know, and, and it's not just about the, the cards or the imagery, but if you're a visual like me, the images are, are right there. But the words and the way you described the wild goddess and the messages, those are so pertinent for the time we live in that I'm just blown away by, you know, your insight in putting this together for this, because this is so important. Well, thank yeah. you so much. And, and for those people who wonder about a man doing the book, I've always been a feminist ever since I've been <laughs> six, six years old. I, I realized, you know, I had a mother, I had a sister, I had an aunt very close to me and what a raw deal they were getting. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd hear men talking. My father was a police sergeant in New York City, and I'd hear them talk, and I was like, what's wrong with these guys? You know, don't, it, what, it's, it's insulting. So I've always been a feminist. Um, actually, one time when I was six years old, I ran out ahead of my father. We were just walking, and I saw a guy actually hitting his, his uh, wife, girlfriend, 1956. And I told him, I ran right up to him and told him to stop, and the guy was going to hit me. And by that time, my father had caught up to me and slammed the guy into the wall and arrested him. Wow. You know, gun, gun out, badge out, because he saw he was, someone was going to hit his only son. So I've always 
realized when we were getting a raw deal, I'm very comfortable with my female side. Um, I, I, I don't think there's anything weird about it. And, and the, my, the wild goddess to me is my attempt to help write the raw deal that women have gotten and to be a champion for women. That's, that's how I felt about writing it because these are universal messages, whether, no matter how you sexually identify. These are our universal messages. We're all in this together. We're all trying to live until we die. And that's that's what the wild goddess is all about. Is I, I love what you said about walking the edge. This is the edge walking. It is the edge walking. And, you know, it's the way that I like to look at my life in a lot of ways. And as I look at my life and looking back and look at my life and moving forward, but I love, I love what I discover about this. And you talk about this. There are a couple of the cards in the book that you talk about this. You know, if you are on the edge or on the verge or whatever the language is, there's also being divinely guided. You yeah. see, you know, the edge to me was something that if I was going to step off, I would always get a message about that step. Uh, didn't always listen, didn't always listen. There's a difference between getting a message and listening to the message. It's a really fundamental difference. Yeah. But once I caught on, like, oh, okay, okay. Once I realized that there is this ongoing divine guidance, but putting it in wild goddess archetype, is brilliant for where we are today. Well, thank you so much. It's a brilliant energy. Thank you. I, I be, Because we all want to have that conversation with ourselves because that information is flowing to us all the time. But when you're busy, when you're distracted, when you got your kids talking to you, when you got your boss talking to you, when you're doing your job, it's hard to connect with the, your higher self for want of a better term the, the your intuition which is talking to you all the time in the language that it the only language it knows and can speak symbols so when you take the time to use an oracle and you can and we made the wild goddess so that you can do it at work if you're quick <laughs> and you can close the door for a second unless you want to get your work review which is you're on another planet which i love oh um, i love that too yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Meanwhile, it used to be an great. insult but you know, um, now you it's like, a, yeah, you were doing a great true. job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, I want to talk about there, there is in the deck, and we only have a few minutes. But not only do you take us through this, but you also give us uh, spreads. You yes. give us the three mind body, you give us the law of attraction spread. And what I want to say to people is this is what you talked about earlier is. If three cards come out, there's usually like the web where the weaver and the web are one. There's usually a thread that is tying those together. And that is a beautiful way to look at these as well. Yeah. So the spreads are for once you get comfortable doing the one card readings, because the one card readings are actually enough. But we wanted to put something in there to, to take you on a journey, you know, if you want past, present, future, and, you know, different kinds of spreads are to answer different kinds of questions. But I do recommend that people get familiar with all the different wild goddesses that are in the deck and are within you. Because all these goddesses, all these wild goddesses are, are within us. And today, there are so many things that try and prevent us from getting in touch with the wild that is in us. You know, we eat packaged food, we don't get out into nature, you know, all, all this stuff, street lights. But I, I fundamentally believe in the goodness of people and the goodness of reality and the goodness of the universe and the goddess and, and God and all, all the good things in life. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll find out one day. But I think that using the wild goddess oracle is going to help a lot of people get in touch with how they feel about stuff. I love it. Thank you so much for joining me here today. And also, please say hi to Amy. I sure um, will. She's with our cat. Yep. And I want to just say to everybody, what is the best place for them to get the book and the cards? Uh, well, the best place is, I would love it if they got it from their local store, you know, because small stores need your business and get it from your local store. Just ask them to order the, the, the Wild Goddess Oracle. It's from Fairwinds Press, which is a division of Cordo, which is a big international company. Um, or you can get it from wherever you like to get your books from, or if you want, you can get us from info at the Enchanted World, 
where we also have our own crypto coin on rally.io. It's called Zane, named after our cat. That's our cat right there, Zane, who just gave us a health scare like we've never had. And he, that's why Amy's not with me today. She's uh, tending to him, but he's doing great. He ha apparently has 11 lives, unlike uh, other cats. And he's 20 and a half. Wow. I know, that's right? Great. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, miracles like, happen. Wow. <laughs> the message to us this week is miracles happen and we had a thousand people praying for him on, on mm -hmm. social media and it seems to have worked because miracles happen wow thank you so much please say hi to amy and for those of you out there you know you can pull the cards what i love about this is like i had three cards jump out before and then i also did the four card spread and so when the same card keeps popping up as it did as the fourth card in the four card spread wow you probably should pay attention to it <laughs> the manifesto you should probably you should probably pay attention the other three that popped out i'm just gonna have to spend a little bit more time with these three thank you much love to you please come back if you want when amy is available and we'll do it again anytime Anytime. Thank you. Thank you, Benny. Thank you, Olivia. We'll see y'all next time.